Hello there. So, at the beginning of this year, I had done a video on ST, the simple terminal. And that was around the time I actually started using it, after being recommended it hundreds of times by subscribers. Usually the recommendations I get from subscribers are terrible, but this one was good. So, I did a video on it, but I wanted to do a little update, because I've added... I know a couple of you guys use my build, and a lot more are probably what might be interested. So I wanted to do an update showcasing what ST can do, sort of why I use it, and additional features that I've added to my build. So, now ST, now Suckless Utilities, we'll talk about them later, you might know about them, but they're built to be minimalist, they're built to have very few lines of code, the code is supposed to be very readable, so that even people who aren't big into, you know, or you don't really have to have a lot of program-specific knowledge to get in there and modify things. and. Although a lot of people think of Suckless as being sort of, I don't know, leet, a little hard to, to access, and there, there's a truth to that. I've found that even though I'm not really a programmer, it's, it's pretty easy to get into this program and, since it's source-based, understand it. Now, anyway, I'll get, get into all that in a second, but um, I, as I said, I've added a couple features. Uh, here's my build of ST, it's on my GitHub. I am going to, as an example, just go ahead and clone it. Uh, and install it just in case you don't know how to but um, I've added a couple features like the ability to read X resources I've actually edited the documentation and the manual and stuff like that because people ask and uh, Added some URL detection and stuff like that, but we'll go into that So just clone it and to install it just sudo make install it and There are some build requirements that you may not have well you'll, you'll probably have them but check the readme if you um, if you get some kind of error. So anyway, ST, I actually already had it installed. This is what it looks like, but this is what my build is. Um, now, why do I use ST first off? I will say originally I was using URXVT, which a lot of people use out there, but there are some things that URXVT is just terrible at. Um, one example out there is that um, URXVT is terrible, and a lot of other terminals are just terrible at doing Unicode. ST does them perfectly well. As you can see, these emojis print out perfectly fine. I will say, of course, you do need an emoji font for this. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me, why doesn't it work on ST? Sometimes it's just because you don't have an emoji font. Um, I have Inconsolata. That's a monospace font that has very good emoji coverage and, well, Unicode coverage generally. But um, So ST is very good at Unicode characters. It's also pretty good at, uh, you know, like ranger previews and stuff like that. So the images and stuff like this, they're a lot more robust than they are in UXVT. Now I will say there is the problem where I think if you, yeah, if you like mouse over to another window, sometimes the image disappears. But I find that in general, the images are like, there are a bunch of programs that just can't ha handle these image previews very well. But ST actually does a pretty decent job. It's the only problem is sometimes when you mouse away from it, the image disappears. But um, so anyway, and as I said, you are this is usually thought of as being kind of a bad thing because a lot of people are confused by it. But ST is also source based. So what I mean by that is the intended way that you're supposed to configure ST is not by changing a dot file, but by going into its source files and there is a config.h file. And this is where you actually set the settings. And when once you've changed the settings, you just recompile it. Now that sounds really complicated, but it's just, again, running sudo make install. I actually have it bound to a vim button. So when I'm done editing this, I can just run that or something like that. But it's it's not it's not so um, I, it's not it's not so difficult. The nice thing about I, that I found again as a non-programmer, the thing that I like about some of these suckless programs, ST included, is there's not like a a a rigid line between what a dot file is and what like the actual program is. Once you start start playing around with patches and installing things, you realize that even though I never sat down and learned C or something like that, I'm starting to understand how this thing works and I can make modifications if, if need be. So I think that it, it is very helpful that there's not like a border between what the user can change and what they can't. If you're in this mindset of changing the actual source code, sometimes you can get a lot more about out of your program. But anyway, let's actually talk about this anyway. Um, so here again, here again is the config file. I'm going to go down to my uh, my shortcuts that I've mapped. And some of these I talked about in the last video, but I'll just go over them because 
Again, I get questions about them. Now by default, Suckless is so minimal that it doesn't even have the ability to scroll back in its history. But of course, I, I've added this and to scroll up and down, you can press Alt-K to go up and Alt-J to go down. Vim keys, of course. Or to go up faster, U and D. More Vim-like keys. One question I get a lot is how do I zoom in on the terminal? And I've mapped that to Alt, Shift, and K. That is zoom in in ST and zoom out is J. Again, Vim keys, of course. And uh, to get it back to the normal zoom level, you press Alt and I think Home. I don't actually use that very often. I really only zoom in on stuff when I'm doing videos just because I feel like people might like a little bigger text. But um, again, all of these are changed in the source code and you just recompile it and you can get whatever you want from it. But So that's that. Uh, I also have mouse scroll if you hold down Alt and scroll up or I think you can hold Shift and scroll up. Um, it'll scroll back in the terminal history just the same way. Um, now, one of the big changes that I did add, let me get rid of the screen key for a second. One of the changes that I have ad added since I did my last video, and this is sort of at the request of a bunch of people, is people sort of found it annoying that you had to recompile every time. Like some, there are some things like maybe color or maybe some other basic settings that you wanna be able to change in a kind of dot file. That's fair. Um, so I added in a patch which will actually read uh, some of your settings from X resources. So you can set your font, your colors, your background, you know, your alpha value, your transparency value that is from your X resources. So I can go over, uh, actually, yeah, I'll go ahead and pull up my X resources file where you'll see that I have some, a color scheme set here. I have Grovbox as my active color scheme. And I have this other one, Brogrammer. So if I, just uh, as an example, so let's, um, what is, uh, I think it's space, yeah. So here are what my colors will look like now. I can just go in here, I can comment these out and uncomment these. And, um, oh yeah, you do have to, you know, it is an X resources file, so you have to ha run XRDB X resources. Vim just runs it automatically for me on my, you know, in my Vim configuration. But, um, so I can go here and you'll see that there's a slightly different color in this terminal since we have changed them, changed these settings here. So you can very easily, with my newer build of ST, you can easily change color settings or something else like that. Let me get rid of, I, I don't actually like that color scheme that much, but you know, it's fine. Um, so you can also change your alpha value. Again, my default is 220. Let's say we want it really transparent. I can change it to 150 and that's what that looks like. Or let's say we don't want transparency at all. Change it to 255 and uh, go over here. And that's what that's gonna look like. So again, these settings, you don't have to change your, uh, you, you don't have to recompile it. You don't even have to have the source code. You can just, you know, as I said, uh, ST will automatically read any of these uh, settings from your X resources file. So that's one thing I have added in. Additionally, just because I feel like I should, because people use my, you know, my build or whatever, I did actually add all the new stuff into the man. So if you type in man ST, once you install my build, all this stuff will, will come up, all the bindings and, and other things. Oh, I didn't mention a second ago, I forgot. I do have the ability to copy and paste. So if I wanna copy this stuff, just Alt C and I can paste it in with Alt V or Shift Insert because some terminals have Shift Insert as their, as their um, uh, I don't know, their paste command or something like that. So that is another thing as well. Uh, but the other thing that I added in, I, I think I just pushed this to the repo a couple days ago or something. But the other thing I added in is, uh, okay, it's opaque. It's sort of annoying me. Let me let me actually change this back to the uh, what I had it before. Um, so what I added a couple days ago, let's say I have some, I output some text and here's the text of my website. And there are some URLs in here that I want to follow. Now I could copy and paste them, but that requires a mouse. And as far as I'm concerned, using the mouse is like pulling teeth for me. I just don't like it, it's just not my thing. Um, so what you can do instead, let me actually close out of this browser so you can see it when it spawns. Um, so what I added recently, there's a nice little, well, I'll just show you how it works. You can type in Alt and then L, and that will give you a D menu list of all of the links that appear on ST on this particular window of ST right now. So I can, let's say I wanna follow this link. I can just click on that and it's gonna pop up in a browser. It just uses XDG open or whatever to you know pop up. So there's my link, I can follow that. 
Um, so I added this just a couple days ago. You can, of course, I, I mentioned before, you can use, what what is it called? URL scan or URL view for some programs, but it's nice just being able to actually, uh, so what the patch actually is, well, I close out of it. What the patch, what the patch actually is, is external pipe. It just takes all of the content on ST and pipes it to some other program. And I just stole the example from the Suckless site, which just pipes it to, uh, oh yeah, I should say that that feature requires X URLs to be installed. Just so, so mind that you have to install X URLs. But once you have that, you should be able to have this little feature with D menu. Oh yeah, and D menu has to be installed. But um, so anyway, that, that's about it. Again, if you want to get my build of ST, you can just go to GitHub uh, and go to, which my GitHub is X, Luke Smith XYZ, and it's just ST, and you can get clone it and install it yourself. I'm thinking about adding it to the AUR maybe. I, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but I might do that just because I know a, a lot of you guys use it, and it would actually be easier for me since I have you know the the larbs installer of my dot files. It would actually be easier to read it from the the um, a, AUR or whatever. But that's about it. If you have any other suggestions, uh, feel free to make them. Any other questions, and uh, you can check the documentation or anything if you you know if there are anything anything that might arise from that. But hope you learned something. Check it out if you're interested, and uh, see you next time.